Hello and welcome to today's lesson on exponents. We're going to be working in the topics under standard 2.2 and 8th grade. We're also going to be working on problems from the study island lesson entitled exponents. And I've divided this video into two parts and this is part one of two. So if you're working in that exponent lesson in study island, make sure you watch both parts before you work on the problems. And this part is going to be focusing on the rules and laws of exponents. And I'll go over those and what they are. However, if you want to understand why those rules work the way they do, I really re um, recommend that you go and research that. And Khan Academy is a great site um, that would have videos that explain why these laws work the way they do. So just remember as you're working, um, you can pause, rewind, fast forward to help you stay up and keep taking notes, which is a great thing to be doing. And you can even pause at the beginning of the question, work the problem out, see, and then watch the video to see how you did and where you need to improve. So thank you for joining us today, and let's go ahead and look at some notes. These are the laws of exponents, which means that they're the rules that we have to follow when we are working with exponents and trying to find an answer, either we're multiplying, adding, or subtracting, or dividing, or just trying to simplify the problem. So here, we have the two numbers are being multiplied so we, with the same base, so the same big part. But, and that means you would add the exponents to simplify. So here you added 2 plus 3. When you're dividing, the rule says that you subtract the exponents and if they have the same base. Any number that's raised to the zero power is going to equal one every single time. So it could be a million three hundred twenty-two raised to the zero power. That simplifies to one. Now here you have a power raised to a power, so and that's very powerful. So here you multiply, which is different than here. Here the, there's two numbers of the same base being multiplied. Here there's a power right beside a power, and that's powerful, so it gets multiplied. And so here 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, if you have a set of parentheses being raised to a power, you can remove the parentheses by kind of distributing that power. So each piece in that parenthesis also gets raised to that power. And here's an example. And the same with the division. If you have two items being divided in that in parentheses and it's being raised to a power, you can distribute that division to each or that exponent to each division part. If you have a negative exponent, you're gonna and it's in the top of the fraction, you're gonna remove that by taking that whole um, base and exponent and putting it in the bottom of the fraction. And you can also do that vice versa. If you have a negative exponent in the denominator, you can move everything to the numerator. And then if you have a fraction being raised to negative exponent, we don't like negative exponents, so we always want to make those positive. So to make this positive, you just have to flip the fraction and keep the exponent. And here's an example of that. So let's go ahead and look at some examples now of what you would see on Study Island. Some other tips is remember that when you have a power, 2 to the 5th power, that does not equal, that is not the same as 2 times 5, which is 10. That's completely wrong. Don't do that. That's going to get you a wrong answer every time. What it does mean is if you have 2 to the 5th power, you're going to take 2 times itself 5 times. So 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32. And it also might be advantageous to you to have some of these powers in perfect squares and cubes memorized just to help these problems go faster. If you don't, then you'll just have to do the multiplication step by step, and it might just take you a little longer, which is fine too. Um, some people just find it easier to memorize some of these. And as you use them, they should stick and become a little more familiar also. So here I have two numbers being multiplied with the same base of 2. So that means I'm going to add their exponents. So that means I'm going to have 2 to the 10th because 6 plus 4 equals 10. So 10 to the 2nd means that you're going to take 2 times itself 10 times. So if you don't have this memorized, you're going to have to go through it. So 2 times 2 is 4, 
4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 times 2 is 64. 64 times 2 is 128. 128 times 2, and you might hit a patch here where you don't know the multiplication table anymore, so you'll have to work it out. So 128 times 2 is 256. 256 times 2 is 512. And then 512 times 2 is... 1,224, which is going to be my final answer, which is B. Here's another multiplication problem. So that means I have the same base here, 3. The big part's the same, so I'm going to add the exponents. That's what my rules, my laws of exponents tell me. So negative 3, or negative 4 plus 7 is 3. So that means I'm going to have 3 to the third, which means I'm going to take 3 times itself 3 times. 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, so 3 to the cubed is 27, which is going to make C my final answer. Now we are dividing. So we have a division problem where we have 4's as our common base, so that means we're going to subtract the exponents. And I typically like to write dividing with exponent rules as a fraction, just to make it a little easier to look at. So we're going to subtract our exponents, so that means here I'm going to be taking 4 minus a negative 2. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding, so that's going to be 4 plus 2, which is 6. So that means this is going to equal 4 to the 6. So that means I'm going to take 4 times itself 6 times. So here, 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, 64 times 4 is 256, 256 times 4 is 1,024. And then finally, 1,200, or sorry, 1,024 times 4 is 4,096, which is going to be your final answer, which is A. So once again, we have a division problem where we have matching bases. So these fives here are the same. So that means we're going to subtract the exponents. That's what our rules and laws of exponents tell us to do. So here that means I'm going to have negative 2 minus 3, and that's going to equal negative 5. So that means this is going to equal 5 to the negative 5th power. Well, first, we don't like to have exponents that are negative. So to remove this negative, this is currently in the numerator. So I'm going to have to move it to the denominator and everything stays the same except for now it's in the denominator and the exponent is positive. So now I have to figure out what is 5 to the 5th power. So that's going to be 5 times itself 5 times. So 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125. 125 times 5 is 625 and then you might hit the spot where you have to work it out a little sooner, but 625 times 5 is 3,125, which, remember though, that is what is in the new denominator here. So that's going to make my final answer C. Here, I have a power raised to a power, so that is very powerful, so I'm going to multiply according to my exponent rule. So here, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, so this is going to be 5 raised to the negative second power. However, I don't like, we don't like negatives in our exponents, so in order to remove it, I have to move it to the denominator and then I'll make that 5 squared positive in the denominator. Well, 5 squared is 25. 
So this is going to be 1 over 25, which is C. This is also a power raised to a power. You're going to have here 6 times 2 is 12, so this is going to be 3 to the 12th power, which means that you're going to take 3 times itself 12 times. But looking at my answers here, they are nice and don't expect me to multiply it out 3 out 12 times. They just leave it in exponent form, so my final answer here is C. So here I have what they tell us that m to the 4th times m to the 5th is 512. So if I have m to the 6th times m cubed, what would that be? Well, first I'm going to simplify this. The m's match, and they're being multiplied, so I'm just going to add the exponents. So I'm going to have m to the 9th is equal to 512. And then I'm going to look here, and I'm going to try to simplify this. Once again, it's m's match, the bases match, so I add the exponents. This is also m to the 9th. So these are the exact same thing on both sides. So that means that if this m to the 9th equals 512, this m to the 9th is also going to equal 512. And that's going to make my final answer b. This problem is very similar to the last one, only now it's division. So I have m to the 7th over m to the 5th equals 9, and they want to know what is the value of m to the 10th over m to the 8th. So the first thing I'm going to do is simplify both of these and see where that leaves me. So it's division with matching bases, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract the exponent. 7 minus 5 is 2, so this is saying m to the 2nd equals 9. So I'm going to go over here and do the same thing here. It's division with matching bases, so I subtract the exponent. 10 minus 8 is also 2, so here it's saying if m to the 2nd equals 9, what's m to the 2nd equal? Well, that's also going to equal 9, and that means my final answer is going to be A. Thank you for joining us today, and I hope you learned something new.